Hey everyone, here is our 1989 Ford Chinook. Just got it a couple weeks ago. Really haven't had time to dig into it and see what we got. Uh, there is some leaking on the roof a little bit because the previous owners put a roof rack on it and did not seal the holes properly. So the body is fiberglass minus the front compartment area. So that is pretty unique for these type of RVs. A lot of the more modern RVs are yeah, piece built together. So we're gonna strip out completely. The bones are completely good. The engine, very minimal rust on the underbody. Uh, the generator doesn't work. The water heater doesn't work. So we just got a lot of little work to do on it, but it's gonna be a fun renovation project. Got the rear entrance with the ladder rack, and we'll give you a tour of the inside next. Chinook with the rear entrance. It's got a nice little screen door, full size fridge, AC unit. Haven't tested that out yet. Got these little nifty straps. Had no idea what they were when we first got it. Like, oh, that's odd. But it's a third bed, which is pretty cool. Also, we got an oven and stove. The oven has never been used. Haven't even checked any of the gauges. So this should be pretty interesting. It's got the oak cabinets. The sweet clock, that's probably going to stay there, not going to lie. Then we also got the VCR tape deck, probably update that a little bit. Lots and lots of storage, the old school TV, and then you got the front captain's chairs. Very comfy, the passenger one does slide back and kind of swivels. We'll rotate this baby around. More and more storage. You know, ample storage was absolutely awesome. Very bright. We'll probably still get a limo tent on these just for a little more privacy. Got the sink. A little bit of water damage down there as you can see. But we're gonna be gutting this thing completely making it look all pretty. Then the bathroom is very, very spacious, which is pretty nice compared to most campers. You guys stay tuned. We'll show you some more as we dig into this project. So we got everything plugged in. And I turned everything on, a little sketchy cord. We are definitely gonna be redoing that. But once I turned everything on, it appears that we have AC working. It's kinda cool. Kinda old school looking. More than likely gonna replace it, something a little more high efficiency. And once we start digging into the wires, we'll see what we're getting ourselves into. Uh, I believe the freezer is on. Uh, we'll turn it up. We'll see if this thing actually uh, works. In theory it should, because it's one of those old school, cool freezers. Microwave, haven't tried that on. Not even sure how to, this thing works or if there's any propane, but the little monitor thing, it does say that everything is pretty much good. We're charging, I don't know what the, uh, is up with the battery. Good, fair, and weak battery signals are showing. But it doesn't look like we have anything in the crapper, which is always good, which we did drain. All right, so we are testing out the fresh water because there's fresh water left in there in the tank. Ooh, it smells a little Ooh, Yeah, nice that's sweet. the smell. Yeah. 
so definitely need to clean out the water tank. <laughs> if not, get a new one. We'll see how we can get this baby come to come clean. <laughs> All right, so as we are emptying out the skunky water, find a nice leak in the water heater, which we knew this did not work. Uh, I don't think it got winterized properly, so we'll see if we can doctor that up. Otherwise, we can definitely do that. And then also in one of the side compartments, you can see where the water is just coming dripping in from that water heater. And honestly, I might just bypass that water heater and come up with a different hot water solution. So we just opted to cut the hoses off and the overflow, as you can see, pretty nasty. Bunch of mold, gunk. Just going to redo it. We might be able to salvage the pump. But other than that... Smells so bad. And Pippi says, we don't want that. We want fresh water. We didn't do any remodeled videos as we were kind of crunched for time as we had to leave for a deployment down to Iowa uh, that we actually took Betty White and... Uh, Doing a remodel is definitely a good test to one's marriage. So for the front cabinet area, we cleaned the carpet as best we could and then painted any wood trim with white cabinet paint. So anywhere there was an oak, we just painted that with the, this cabinet paint. Um, sanded and prepped it and uh, made sure it was nice and cured and it, it worked well. Um, probably would choose a different color next time just because white is very uh, shows everything. So here is the before so you can remember what old Betty looked like in her original glory. Um, and then here is the main view from the overall cabin area. So starting from the top down, we replaced the ceiling because it was just kind of a wet fabric. We replaced it with some thick carpet and we stuck it up there with uh, some heavy duty construction adhesive. For the AC unit, it actually ended up working like a champ. It cooled off the space perfectly, and uh, we just ended up spray painting the cover, and it really kind of brought up the, the area up to date uh, with the carpet as well. Uh, the carpet did have a slight pattern on it. So for the front cabinet storage area, we removed all we removed all the old electronics and covers, and uh, painted the main compartment black uh, just so stuff would kind of blend in. And we just used that as a main storage area, kind of our quick go-to grab stuff. Uh, so for all the original oak cabinets, we just sanded and painted all those as well. Um, we ended up removing the water tank, which was originally under the bed to the left. So we only had running water when we hooked up to the city water, um, you know, with the house hose to the outside. Um, when we boondocked, we just used a five-gallon um, jug, and that just worked perfectly for our needs. Uh, for the water heater... Uh, we just abandoned it. Um, I cut the propane line and then I capped that off because uh, it did have an onboard uh, propane tank. And for the onboard propane tank, I actually ended up uh, spray cleaning off the bottom, spray painting it, and uh, getting it filled up. Um, you just had to be careful where you filled it up uh, because it was uh, rather old. Uh, so for the beds, they are. 2x4 construction and it's a double memory foam mattress cut in half. So both benches pushed together made your full, full double bed. Um, in retrospect we should have kept one of the couches um, that way we would have had the additional seat belts as well. The blanket was an old duvet cover that Amy cut up and sewed up so it really kind of made the place a lot cheerier. Uh, the table worked um, near the captain's chairs and where you see a place as well. So it was kind of nice. You could be able to swivel it around, use it, sit on each side, use it for a work table. Uh, it really worked awesome. In the kitchen area, everything worked. Um, it was awesome to be able to have the microwave when you're hooked up to power or the propane stove or the oven. Um, the stove made coffee and eggs every morning. So really can't complain there. The, as I said, the onboard propane tank um, you just had to be selective where you filled it up. I think we used maybe one or two tanks of it um, on our trips. Um, so it's really efficient appliances. You really don't burn through too much. Um, and we really didn't have to use the heater as well. Uh, so for the backsplash, we really don't want to, uh, you know, 
weighed anything down, uh, so we used vinyl stick on tiles, and it actually turned out great. For the flooring, it was an absolute bear to get out. Um, it was probably one of the bigger challenges because when they build these RVs, they do the flooring first. So all the cabinets, everything were laid on top. So trying to get all that carpet pulled out from underneath the cabinets and everything leveled was very tough. Uh, so we just laid down vinyl flooring and trimmed it out with white trim. We left the cabinets under the stove as that had water damage and we had to reinforce the legs. The same true was for the back gear closet. Um, we did paint the water heater on the outside to match the existing paint job and that was the same paint we used for the AC unit so just kind of that light muted gray. And we, we tried it the best we could to polish and buff everything out on the paint job um, but age was going against us. Being 32 years old um, you know plus um, you know and I'm not sure how old that is in human years but for being an RV that is very old. For the generator, we definitely tried to get that going. We went to a couple different shops. They really didn't want to touch it. Um, we got the carburetor cleaned a handful of times and was still having issues running. Uh, it would maybe run for five minutes and cut off. Uh, it would only work hooked up to an external gas can um, as the line to the RV was non-existent anymore. And for the roof, I resurfaced the roof with some heavy duty roofing paint. Um, it looked like some silver paint when painted. It smelled really bad. Um, and then I also caulked a lot around the AC unit along with drilling some extra drain up drainage holes um, just so we wouldn't have any water issues. Uh, so this is a picture right before Betty got onto the ferry to go across Lake Michigan so we could enjoy our 10 day trip up to the Uber. We are sad to see her go, but uh, I think we're gonna get another one down the road or something similar. We will see.